So first and foremost, you will need the RetroArch emulator. You can get it for Android, you can get it for PC. I also have a separate video on how to set it up if you are a first time RetroArch user. There's also a great how to guide on the RetroArch website and I will leave that in the description below. So a few things to take note, you will need the exact same version of the ROM that you do plan on using for Netplay. I would also highly recommend using the same core and I'll get to that in a bit. There are two ways to connect to each other online. The first way is via the lobby and that's by creating a room, having someone find your room and join it. The other way is to manually connect via IP address. So in this video, I'm gonna use the easier and more straightforward route, the lobby system. All right, so I've RetroArch up and running right now on PC. There are a couple of steps that RetroArch recommends doing before you do go online. Now the first is to make sure your game is added to a playlist. To do this, just head over to the plus icon right here, either scan a directory or scan the file. So you'll scan the directory that your games are located in or the file. Secondly, you will also need a specific core. So not all cores are compatible with online multiplayer. I've experienced some work better than others. For example, there are a ton of Super Nintendo cores that you can download. The one I find that works is SNES 9X. If you download a core and try to go online and it's not working, you can always try a different core. RetroArch does state that any core that supports save states should work for Netplay. However, I found that's not necessarily the case when looking for optimal performance. So once you've downloaded the core, you've got your game populated here in the playlist, the next step is to go into your network settings. The network settings can be found in these little gear icons here by scrolling down and clicking on network. Now there are a few different options here and I'm gonna go over them. I'm currently running RetroArch 1.7.6. Different versions of RetroArch may have different options in here. So if your menu options are different, you may either have an older version or potentially a newer version of RetroArch. The first option is publicly announced Netplay. I would definitely recommend leaving this switch on so that your lobby does show up in the list of available servers to select. The second option is use relay server. I found this one to be very hit and miss in terms of quality. So essentially what this option does is it forwards your play to a server computer so that the other person connecting to you can connect to that server computer instead of directly connecting to you. I recommend leaving this off unless you're having issues connecting and then maybe try turning it on and seeing if that helps. You can set up a server password if you like and a spectate only password. And this says the password for connecting the Netplay host with only spectator privileges used only in host mode. So for example, if you would like someone to watch your gameplay, you can set up a server spectate only password for them to use. There's the Netplay spectator mode on or off. If it's on, people can join in and watch you play. Input latency frames and input latency frames range. These are two options. I've got them set to zero. If you do increase them, it may smooth out your overall gameplay experience online at the expense of input latency, which is essentially, if you were to hit a button, it's the amount of time between you hit the button and it registers on your screen. So if you have a higher number, it's gonna take a longer time between your button press and the game doing something. However, if your game is really jittery and things aren't going smoothly, you can always try increasing this to see if it helps. So that's all from this menu. Now I would head down to user. You have user, so for privacy, accounts, and username. The only one you really need to worry about here for online is username. If you don't set a username, it's a lot harder to find your room. You'd have to search through IP addresses to figure out which room is which. This one, my room will come up as Mr. Sujano one Very easy for someone to find and use. On top of that, when I'm connecting to someone, it'll say Mr. Sujano one joined. So when that's all done, you're pretty much good to go. Head over to where the headset is, which is the Netplay menu. You have different options here. Start Netplay host, connect to Netplay host, 
or refresh room list. Now, if you're connecting to someone, go down to refresh room list. If someone's already got the room set up and you just have to connect to it, you click refresh room list and this will bring up the most recent rooms available and you can see here for example this one the person didn't enter your username so you don't really know whose room it is it's very hard to tell this person says Alex Gamer that's their username a lot easier to tell who it is there's also a lot of information here it shows the retro arts version that they're using 1.7.3 the core that they're using FB alpha as well as the game so they're playing Samurai Showdown 2 if you are creating a room go over to start netplay host it says enables netplay in the host server mode as soon as you hit enter yellow text will come up it says netplay will start when content is loaded from this point, go over to your game. It says for me, Super Mario Kart, the Europe version, I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna hit enter again to say run, start the content. It says Netplay will start when the content is loaded. And then it says waiting for client. It should also let me know that player one has joined, which is me. See, you have joined as player one. And from this point on, all I have to do is wait for someone to connect. All right, so I've got a bit of picture in picture going here. I do have RetroArch loaded on my Android. Yes, RetroArch is cross platform. So for RetroArch on Android, I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did on the PC. So I'm gonna make sure I load the right core here, SNES 9X. I'm gonna head down into Netplay. Join or host a Netplay session. So like on the PC, when we went into that icon that showed the headset, there was a there were three options here start netplay host connect to netplay host and refresh rooms list so make sure we click on refresh rooms list whether you're doing this on android or pc the steps are exactly the same and if i scroll down here i should be able to see my room be populated so if i keep scrolling keep scrolling i can see mr sujano 1 canada that is me I can also see a retro pie one, which is not me. So Mr. Sujeno one, it shows retro arch 1.7.6, win 32 X 64, which is the version of retro arch I'm using on my computer. It says the core is SNES 9X and the game is Super Mario Kart. Now you can also see the version of the game populated in this menu. So all I have to do is click on the version of the game and it does take a little bit to load and to connect, especially from Android to PC. Now this setup is available on different systems as well. For example, the NES, even the Dreamcast, you can also net play. Now your overall experience with net play will differ based on the system that you are running. Different computers handle emulators differently. On top of that, if you're using different systems, for example, a PC connected to an Android, your experience may also differ. Location matters. If you're further away from someone, the location will impact how well your game performs. The further you are away, the worse your connection is going to be. For the best overall connection, my recommendation is that you connect to someone on the same operating system. For example, if you're both using Windows 10, use the same version of RetroArch, as well as you will need the same ROM. All things considered, everyone's experience with Netplay will probably differ to some degree, so it's really hard to troubleshoot specific issues. So that's it from a very basics point of view. You can obviously tweak settings, play around with things. If things aren't going well, feel free to change your settings up and see if it helps. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you like my video, leave a like. If you didn't like my video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.